Hello, my name is Jacob Bashista. Uh, you might have seen my Medium article, or you're just stumbling across this on YouTube. But I have recently written a tutorial on how to build a custom lens in Snapchat's Lens Studio, and I'm making a video on how to do it. So, I'd recommend if you want really in-depth detailed, you read my article. Otherwise, you can watch this video to just get started and going. The basic requirements we need is a Snapchat account, and you need Windows 10 or Mac OS 10.10 .10 or plus, and that is to run Lens Studio. Other than that, you can use any phone you want. You can essentially do whatever you want. Lens Studio is also pretty demanding, so you might need a, at least a semi-average uh, computer. Um, to get started, we need to go to Lens Studio and download and set everything up. So we open up Lens Studio here. This is the website, lensstudio.snapchat.com. The link to this will be in the description. It's also right here in my article. And you can go to download. It will have you sign into your Snapchat account. Like this. And then you can agree and download for either Mac or PC. I've already done this, so you're going to download it, set it up, install it, and then you can just open up Lens Studio. And you should get a screen that looks like this. This is the home screen to Lens Studio. In here, you have the new project option, the open project option, the My Lens options, and a bunch of templates to choose from. The new project does exactly what it says. It makes a new, completely blank project. I would not recommend doing this until you're completely comfortable with how everything in the program works. There's open projects, so if you've made a project in the past, you can open it. And My Lenses lets you look at the lenses that you've submitted to Snapchat. An important note is don't submit lenses if you don't own all the content. So like the example I'll be using today, I don't own it, so I can't publish it. And don't submit a lens unless you're 100% sure it's done, because once you enter it for submission, you can't edit it. So, those are the basic guidelines of submitting for a lens. Um, otherwise, right now, I'd recommend we use a template. Um, I'm going to use the static object template, and I recommend you do as well, because it has everything we need for this tutorial. In later tutorials, we'll use some of these other ones. But for now, we're just going to click on static object, and it will say loading project, and your project will open. And this is Lens Studio. It may be a little overwhelming at first, but we can walk through everything and it'll be nice and good. Over in the top, we have a menu bar here. This menu bar has your project info button. This button allows you to uh, share, submit, edit your project. We have the submit button. Like I said, don't click this till you're ready. We have some tools up here. And then we have the button to send your device to your phone. We'll walk through each of these as we go. We also have the objects panel here, which shows everything that's currently in your scene view. So this is your scene view, and this shows you everything that's currently in your scene view. We have the resources panel, which shows is essentially a file explorer of your project. So this shows each file in your project, and you can navigate through it. Because this is a template, there's already a bunch of stuff in here. There's the logger on the bottom down here. The logger shows you, uh, it's essentially a console. So if you've ever done any programming stuff before, it prints out messages, it lets you know when your project's saved, it lets you know when it's exported, and all of that stuff. There's the inspector down here, which right now it says nothing selected, but if I say select the camera, it will fill in with information. And this is where you edit most of the objects. This has the transform editing, the camera editing, and the world tracking and stuff. Then there's the preview window, which lets you preview your thing, and it also lets you interact with it as if you were using it on a phone. This is useful if you don't have a phone and you just want to play around with stuff. Um, I wouldn't submit unless you have a phone to look for any problems that you might not have identified in here. And then in the scene view, you have all these options. You have pan, select, move, rotate, and scale. So you can use right click to rotate, middle click to pan, or you can use the pan tool to pan. And then you can use the scroll wheel to zoom in and out. So those are the basic controls. 
If you want to use left click, you can hold Alt and then Alt will rotate for you. Or not Alt, uh, Control or Option, depending on what computer you're on. And so let's get started. The first thing we want to do is get rid of the template, which is this trophy here. So to get rid of it, we're going to go over to where it says Trophy, Replace Me, right click, Remove, and it will disappear from your scene. Then down here in Resources, we're going to go right click, Remove, and it will disappear from here. And now your scene has been essentially reset with only the basics of what you need. So now we're going to add in our own thing. So to do that, you can go to Poly, which is Google's free 3D warehouse, and find a model. It's important to note that the model you find has to have an OBJ uh, type file. So I'm going to do a tennis ball here. I like this one. I've tested that this model works. I'm going to do download OBJ file. If you do something that is not the tennis ball, make sure it has an OBJ file and you can download it. And then there's also one more note that we need to look at is that inside here, if we open in Finder, this has a PNG file separate from everything else. You need to make sure that's true because otherwise Lens Studio will not be able to find your texture very well. So if you have this, you have the model you want, you can uh, actually open Slack, just quit Slack. Um, find the model you want. There's lots of models on this website. I'd recommend something made by Google. Um, you can see Poly by Google made this. And it's just, this website's super easy. It will be in the description. It's also down um, it's also down here in my article. So I scroll down a lot here. The article has a lot more in-depth into how each of these things function. So if you really want to know that, I'd recommend looking there. So now in our resources to add something, you can go to Add New, Import Files. And this will import either 2D images, 3D models, um, sounds, whatever you want. Right now, we're just going to use a 3D model. In the next tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use Interactive, where you can touch something to make it play a sound. So I'm going to do Import Files. And I'm going to navigate to where I downloaded Tennis Ball. And I want to choose the OBJ file, which is the actual model of our file. There's the model file, there's this, which is the material, and then this is our texture. We only want to import the object file because that's linked to all the other things. In the preview here, it looks completely white because the preview is only loading the model geometry. You can click Open. And you'll notice a few things have happened when we did that. Down in the logger, it says start OBJ import, and then import complete. In our resources view, you can see a new folder with the name of your model, and then a materials, meshes, and textures folder. Make sure you have all three of these things, um, or else your model might not work. You might have more than one material, you might have more than one texture, just keep this in mind. And then up here, in the objects view, you have a tennis ball object. And this is the actual object in your scene. For a little bit of setup, we're going to move the tennis ball into the world object controller, like that, because the world object controller is your entire world that your users can edit and interact with. So we don't want them to interact with something that's outside of this. So if you have a new thing or something you don't want them to touch, you'd put that outside of here. But because we want the tennis ball to be there, we're going to put it in there. You may also note that your tennis ball didn't appear in your scene view, and it actually did appear in your scene view. It's just when downloading models from online, sometimes the sizes get broken. So to fix that, I'm going to select on the tennis ball object right here, and I'm going to change the scale to 200, 200, 200. This might be different for your model. This is pretty good for mine, and we can now see the models here, but something's a little odd about it. It's completely black. And the reason it's completely black is because there's an issue with how materials use textures in Lens Studio. I'm not entirely sure why. It happens with every model I use. It might not happen for you, but it happens for me. To fix this, you're going to want to go in your resources view. 
and find where it says tennis ball or your model materials and you're gonna have to repeat the step for each material in your project mine is this one so I'm gonna click it and then in the inspector we have this thing that says base color and you can see the base color is currently set to black we don't want it to be set to black so we can click on it and we get this little uh, color picker and we can drag the line all the way over to the side and now it's white and that means that we can now see it so it's just a weird issue with importing but now we can see our tennis ball in the view and right now you could open up snapshot and this would work you could place your tennis ball in the world but there's a few things that aren't quite right the first one is our tennis ball is halfway down this grid so this green thing is the floor but you can see it's halfway under the floor so it kind of looks right but it gives a weird illusion, like it's supposed to be halfway down, but because it's being projected, it's actually on top. It just doesn't look good. So now you're going to select it over here. And we're going to raise it up so that it is just at the edge whoops, of the ground. Oops, I keep selecting the wrong thing. Just at the edge of the ground like that. So now it looks like it's kind of sitting on the ground, and that's good. There is one more thing, and that is, let me make sure that we have everything so far. Yeah, so we want to make sure, so this is called the touch collision area. This is where you can interact with it. So if you've seen in the preview, you can drag and move the ball around. This is because the touch collision area defines where things can be touched. And in the World Object Controller, it has two scripts, the Touch script and the Manipulate scripts, and these allow you to actually move the object. But our Touch Collision Area is currently set for the old trophy size, so we want to change it. So you can click on the Scale tool or hit the R key, and then rearrange this so that it's almost the same size as your model. So you might have a different model, you might have to change the size a little bit, but for mine this works just fine. So now it's roughly the size of my ball, and I can select it still, but if I select over here, it's not being selected. Whereas before, if I select it up here, it would be selected. So that just makes it a little bit nicer. The last thing we want to do is right now our tennis ball doesn't project the shadow on the ground, which makes it look kind of unnatural because everything has a shadow if there's light. So to add a shadow, you're going to click on this, which is the mesh visuals. So this is the actual uh, geometry that makes up your object. You might have more than one of these if you have a more complex model. But this is what essentially defines this is a circle, this is a square, this is a whatever. And to make it so it can cast a shadow, you need to change the shadow mode down here in the inspector to be caster and you see it now has a shadow, but it's a completely black shadow. And shadows aren't usually like that. Shadows are usually kind of opaque. So I like to decrease it down to 0 0.40, and I think that gives it a nice view. So now that we have all of that set up, we can go ahead and send it to our phone. So to send it to the phone, we're going to save it with either Command S, Control S, or File Save. I'm going to save it into the One Studio Tutorials folder. I'm going to call it um, oops, Tennis Ball, like that. Save. And then in the Project Info button, I'm going to click that. And I'm going to change the name to Tennis Ball, just so I know what this is. You can also add an icon if you have an icon. It's just 320 by 320. And then you give it a hint. Right now, we don't have anything to need a hint. But we can apply this. Save it again, file save, command s, control s. And then up here in the bottom, top uh, right hand corner, this is where you can send it to your devices. If you've never done this before, you'll have to pair it with your phone. It will tell you how to do it. It's pretty easy. You can just scan the code. And otherwise, if you have paired it, you can open up Snapchat like this. Your Snapchat open. And then you can click on the push lens device, and it'll say sending lens. And it will take a little bit as it builds it up. And then it says lens has been pushed. You can see down here in the logger, lens pushed by a server. And on my phone, if you notice, there was a little notification that said you've received the lens. 
You can now use this like any other lens. So you hold down to open up the menu and then slide over and here is your tennis ball. And you can move around it. It has everything you need. You can move it. If you pinch, you can make it bigger or smaller. And that's it. So if you have any questions, let me know in the comments or on the Medium article. In the next video, we will be adding a uh, sound to our tennis ball that will play when you tap on it. But other than that, thank you for watching and goodbye.